Hello and welcome to the Empowered Couples Podcast where here you get modern, non-boring relationship advice for you and your partner to communicate like pros, fight smarter, and stay on the same team no matter the challenge that you face. I am one of your hosts, Aaron Freeman. And actually, Jocelyn will not be joining us today as she has not been able to even speak the last two days. She is resolving a biological conflict, which for those of you that know German New Medicine, shout out to that. But that's a whole different other topic. Today, this episode is about throw out your idea of one being right and wrong, then your relationship will thrive. And some background on this, you know, this dynamic is one that we come across a lot in our work and our coaching with couples. And overall, communication should seek to connect rather than disconnect. So if you look for places in your relationship where your communication is creating any sort of disconnect versus connection, that's where you want to look to implement a new skill or be more effective in that area. Because when you get into a place of one of you being right and setting up the other person to be wrong, then you just create an environment of disconnection. So this cannot be an effective way to communicate. And this isn't the feeling you want to have in your relationship. And you certainly do not come up with the best ideas for action moving forward or that serve the relationship itself when one of you comes out as the winner and one of you comes out as the quote unquote loser. And some examples of this, you know, usually there is probably some little tension, some small disagreement. And then one of you will say something about the order of events isn't correct in what your partner is saying, which is like there's a difference between what you think happened versus didn't happen versus them. So I'm right on what happened. You're wrong. Another one would be what was said versus not said. Oh, no, no, that's that's not right. That's not what I said. Or even someone else. No, they didn't say that. Okay, that's there another opportunity for disconnection, making one of you right and one of you wrong. Other times where you're just right and wrong about the details of things. Uh, and probably more specifically, I would say when you get into labels of attitude or tone with each other. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, I know I know you've experienced this. One partner says you're being, say, defensive. No, I'm not. That's not right. So you're arguing about, oh, do you had this attitude? You had this tone? Well, no, I didn't. Once again, someone's right, someone's wrong. You have an environment of disconnect. And then the last one being one that we've talked about a bit, and it's who's right and who's wrong about, well, that's not my intent. And where you get into this thing about, you shouldn't have taken it that way. It shouldn't have impacted you because that wasn't my intent. Again, I'm right because my intent was pure or positive. You're wrong because of how you took it or that wasn't my intent. You didn't get it. So all of these places are going to be where you can come up against this idea of one of you being right and one of you being wrong. Now, no matter what, in each of those situations, it's just so subjective to you as individuals. So again, it puts you in a position of one of you being right and the other one being wrong. So even if you win, and this is maybe my major takeaway from this episode. If you win your argument against your partner, meaning they even admit, okay, yeah, you're right. It wasn't my tone. It's not what I meant. Not the order of events. Then the relationship loses. Why? Because you've already put yourself in a position where you're against your partner. If you win an argument against your partner, you're on opposite sides. You create a disconnection again. So even if you win your argument, you really still lose. So your partner ends up feeling defeated, disengaged, bad about themselves. You have more disconnection. You're probably not going to be intimate. You're not going to enjoy your dinner. You're not going to have a good evening. You're not going to be connected. So really, at the end of the day, is you winning your argument worth all of that? Being disconnected, again, probably not going to be intimate, not going to have connection. And no, it's really not. So that's where you can really transform your communication, your relationship by noticing where am I trying to be right and making them wrong and just throwing that all, all together for this new perspective that I'm about to get into. 
Because even science shows with like eyewitness accounts, for an example, that they're so highly subjective and inaccurate because memory and then the recall of that memory has so much to do with the emotion that is experienced by the observer in that moment. And it's very different for people. And likely it's very different for you and your partner. Maybe not so much as an eyewitness account, but what you've experienced because of the emotion of an event is going to have you remember and recall that differently. And this isn't a episode to go more into the science, but when you recall a memory, we think of it as the same as when you push a video file on your laptop, like you start it and then the video rolls the same every time. And it's not the case. How your brain constructs a memory is more like a jigsaw puzzle that you form and put together every time that you recall it and share it. So you can see how complex that is and really why should we be so intent on how I remembered something because who knows how accurate it really is anyway. So what do you do? Well, rather than being just right or wrong, you need to start focusing on understanding and accepting your partner's experience and the impact. That's it. So if you find yourself in a spot where, oh my God, it seems like one of us is trying to be right, trying to get the other one to be wrong. Okay, let me pause. Let me seek for understanding and just accepting the experience they're having, the experience they're trying to transmit to me, understanding what the impact of maybe my own actions are on them. That is a better focus. And even when you have these little moments of tension or disagreement, they can usually go the route of conflict because one of you ends up arguing for one of these points. And I find that talking to a lot of men, it really is more even around the intent. Well, intent just doesn't matter in these moments. It does later, like in our repair process, which by the way, There have been hundreds of people that have gotten our brand new making up and moving forward guide that takes you through step by step all five R's of our five R process. It has how to say things, the common misconceptions, the common mistakes you make. And we've gotten so many messages back that this this $19 guide has literally been invaluable for repairing from conflicts from keeping small things from turning into conflicts and then overall being able to come back to connections so much faster. So I want to put that out there again, only $19 and you can go to the couplesexperience.com slash guide to get that. And I'll put that in the show notes, but it just goes to show a lot of times the error in repair does come from this. Well, I'm trying to be right and I'm trying to explain and almost convince you my partner of where I'm right versus just seeking to understand and accepting the experience and the impact that my wife, in this case, Jocelyn, is trying to convey to me. So one of the places that many people get tripped up is this doesn't mean you have to agree with their experience. You don't have to be having the same experience as them. You don't have to even agree that they should have this experience from whatever event or whatever you had said or didn't say. I mean, none of that really matters. Essentially, there isn't anything to agree or disagree with because it's literally just their experience. There is no wrong. That is what they're experiencing. And I think one of the things for a lot of men is to accept that the experience in the moment is just true for them And likely when you just understand and accept it, they'll be able to move on from that experience. So it's so short term. So it's true, but it's true very temporarily. So just seek to understand it first. So then in the space, so the point is you create this space for understanding. Okay, so getting down to the nuts and bolts, even if you don't agree, once the understanding has happened, Then you can say something like, hey, I'm not in agreement with taking the next action right now, but at least you are on the same side. You're on the same team. You're facing now this challenge or you're facing what to do next as a team and together. And that is going to have you create a better idea, a better 
next action anyway than if, again, one of you that was the winner, one of you a loser, you're disconnected, you're not coming up with the best action forward anyway. So one of the other things I wanted to dive into was why is this so hard? You know, in the moment, why is it that you have to feel as if you're right? And it's more so that, right? I mean, you're not just trying to make your partner wrong. I mean, sometimes you correct them because you want the information that they're putting forth to be accurate maybe, but likely it's just that you want to come off as right. So I have two reasons why this is so hard in the moment to not get into this right or wrong dynamic. It's that you do want to defend your own self image. And to say that more real to your experience, it's just like you don't want to feel like a bad person or even one that's flaky and inconsistent. Now, I know that's probably out of left field. You're like, where'd you come up with that? Well, it's actually from a book called Influence. It's about persuasion. And though it's about how you can persuade people in selling typically or why people will buy anything, one of the key things in psychology is that People want to feel consistent to what they say, primarily because they don't want to feel to themselves like they're inconsistent or this feeling of being flaky. Now, even if you think to yourself, well, my partner doesn't seem to be that interested in keeping to what they say. Well, that's a different discussion, but even so, they might be convincing themselves that they are somehow maintaining consistency within themselves. So when you get into a place where you feel as if your self-image is almost being threatened, like it's going to come off as you are inconsistent or flaky, then you're going to make this hard stance on that you're right. And then the byproduct is that your partner is going to be feeling like they're wrong. So then the second part of why it's so hard in the moment, I would say is you don't want to admit, which can be to yourself or to your partner, that you let them down or you disappointed them because it has you feel, let's say, smaller. You you feel like a smaller person because you're not holding up your end. You're not showing up to be the best that you could be. Yet, if you think about that, here you are willing to make your partner feel wrong or worse about themselves rather than you let yourself feel embarrassed or disappointed that you let them down. So notice that interesting contrast. You'll make a hard stance on being right, then being wrong about something because you didn't want to admit to yourself or to them that you let them down. Okay, then just say that, admit that, be vulnerable, reveal that. However, in not doing that, you're completely okay with making them feel bad about themselves. I mean, how interesting is that, right? So overall, you want to notice where you have these situations where you're creating this dynamic for you to be right and your partner to be wrong. It's never going to be helpful. So you have to seek for understanding and accepting the experience your partner is having as well as likely the impact that some action you took had on them. And and that's it. No right or wrong, no defending, no self-image defense. And a lot of times what you need is something simple like an active listening type of process. And so this isn't a podcast about that, but essentially if you just get out of your own way for a minute and you get rid of all that defense, all that not wanting to be made wrong or admit you let them down and you stop focusing on yourself and how you feel and you actually focus your attention on your partner and how they feel and then verbally saying to them back, what I'm hearing you say is that from XYZ event, you felt disrespected. You felt alone. You felt unconsidered. You felt unloved, unsupported. And you want to get into a conversation where they're able to express themselves and how they felt and that they feel understood in that. And that's it. And I know it's easier said than done, but otherwise you're just always going to be in this battle. And so truly to move into a place where your relationship can truly be thriving, your communication can be effective and smooth. 
you can be more on the same page while you face challenges in life, then you want to move from this right or wrong into understanding and accepting. And if you're wanting uh, more help with that, our making up and moving forward guide is probably the best thing that we've put out there. Obviously comes from our book, comes from our coaching, but we put together that into a concise about 15 page guide. It's only $19 and it breaks down every step of the 5R process. It also breaks down places that you're going to get into mistakes and you're going to reset the repair process or you're going to go from feeling like you're connected and making progress towards something to being disconnected again. And we have prompts and ways to say things for every step. We promise you that this will be the most impactful communication and repair guide that actually has you feel you resolve things, not just move past them, not just move on to the next activity, not just kind of give up to your partner side. And I guess I'm never going to be heard or seen by this, but you can actually have it be something that brings you together. And once again, that's the couples experience.com slash guide. I'll put it in the show notes, but love this conversation with all of you. Send us messages about how this specific podcast has impacted you as well as the guide. And we want to hear from you. We love talking with all of you on Instagram and out there in social land. So more to come, grab your guide. It's going to be the best thing you've ever purchased for your relationship. And can't wait to talk to you on the next episode.